Let's talk about how to distinguish linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. If you're looking at a graph, linear functions will always be a straight line. They can go in any direction. You just won't see a vertical line because then it won't be a function. Exponential graphs have this sliding shape where they start out increasing slowly and then that rate increases more and more. You can also see them headed in a negative direction if it's exponential decay. And then quadratic functions will always make the shape of a parabola. It can open up or it can open down. Be careful if you're only seeing a small piece of a graph because then it might look like a different type of function. Sometimes we have to zoom out to see the whole picture. Now let's think about what the equations will look like. For linear equations, you'll typically see something like y equals 5x plus 3. You shouldn't see any exponents with the variable. You might also see equations that have f of x, just meaning it's a function. You might also see equations in standard form, something like 3x minus 2y equals 12. All of those are linear. You could even see f of x equals just a number or a constant. That too will make a linear function. Exponential functions will have equations where your variable is in the exponent. We might multiply by another number, but the variable has to be in that exponent. You might even have some other numbers in the exponent. And you might even have a constant. But just look for that variable to be in the exponent and you know it's exponential. Quadratic functions have an exponent of two. That's gonna be your greatest exponent. So it could just be x squared we might have x squared plus 5x plus 3. So you could have the variable again, but it, that largest exponent is a 2. You might see it in a factored or a vertex form. But notice when you multiply that out, that x will get the 2 for an exponent, making it a quadratic. These are the types of equations that you might do in later math classes, but these are not linear, they're not quadratic, and they're not exponential. This one has a three for an exponent, so that's a cubic function, and we haven't really done those, and you probably won't do much of that in algebra one. If you see a variable under a square root, that too doesn't count as linear, quadratic, or exponential. And if you see a fraction or division by your variable, that won't be linear, quadratic, exponential either. When you're looking at stories to identify what type of function they represent, look for some key phrases or think about how the relationship is between the variables. For linear relationships, you'll have a constant rate of change. For exponential, think of things like growth and decay. You're going to be multiplying by the variable over and over and over. For quadratic, this usually represents things that are being thrown or dropped. It can also represent some relationships involving area. Be careful with percent problems. If it's a percent growth or decay, talking about uh, money growing or maybe a population, that's usually exponential. If you're just talking about percent of a number to find a discount or a markup and it's the same percent, then that might just be a linear relationship. Let's look at how to identify what type of relationship you have just looking at a table of values. First thing, take a look at your x values, and we like these to be counting by the same increment. So if they're all mixed up or missing numbers, you might wanna rearrange to make you uh, see what's going on a little clearer. All right, now we're gonna see what the change is in these y values. 7 to 4 is going down by 3. Down by 3. Down by 3. Over here, let's see what's happening. Going up by 1 every time. 
That means my rate of change is constant. It's constantly decreasing 3 for every 1, or a slope of negative 3 over 1. Whenever you have a linear relationship, you'll have a constant rate of change. Take a look at the exponential relationship here. Many times you can spot the pattern happening as you move down the table. Each time here we're multiplying by 2. If you can spot that pattern that you're multiplying by the same number every time, then that's exponential. Let's look at this quadratic relationship. First of all, there's no clear pattern that we're multiplying by a number, so it's not exponential. Let's see what the change is from negative 5 to negative 4. That's an increase of 1. Negative 4 to negative 1 is increasing by 3, increasing by 5, and increasing by 7. So that's not linear. The rate of change is not constant here. But if we do this again, find the second difference from 1 to 3 is an increase in 2. 3 to 5 is 2. And 5 to 7 is also 2. That there is the second difference. And if the second difference is the same every time, that's a quadratic function. And let me note again, you're not ignoring these x values. But since they are increasing by a constant increment here, we can go ahead and do this work. If these were all jumbled up or skipping around, you'd have to rearrange and find the rate of change each time depending on that x. Let's look at one special case with exponential. Now typically you can spot the pattern of multiplication, but let's look at this exponential function and see what table it would make. 2 to the 0 power is 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, so I know it's exponential because I have the equation here, but as you can see, there's not a clear multiplication pattern happening. What you can do is start out by testing to see if it's linear or quadratic, just like we do those, and find the change. The change here is 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now once I've found this change, you might see that now we can see that multiplication pattern happening. We're multiplying by 2 every time. So if you start out by testing the methods we did before and you can't make anything work, then try finding the change first and then see if you see a multiplication pattern happening. That's exponential.